Hey, what's up guys? It's Seth from Workbench and this week we're gonna make actual glitches in cinema by making cinema actually glitch. All right, so this one's gonna be a quick one. We're gonna do some animated glitch maps in cinema. I'm gonna show you how to create this setup and then I'm gonna show you how to mess with cinema's renderer to get some interesting glitches. So let's get started. To start off with, I created a simple animation. Basically, we're animating setup's a little crazy, but it'll make sense in a minute. So to start off with, we have a sphere on this side here and a box on this side here. And how I'm creating this is I created a box and it's segmented 30 by 30 by 30. And then I have a spherify effect, which is found here in the deformers tab and it's called spherify, it's here in the first row. And what this does, if you haven't played with it before, it just converts a box into a sphere. And that's part of the reason why we have so many segments, um, but we'll need those segments to do our animation too. So then inside of that, I have a, another sphere, also a cube, and I have that segmented two by two by two, and it's a little smaller than the first one. Our first one's 200, our next one down is 120. So you can see this one is set to 120, 120, 120, and segments of two on X, Y, and Z. And that has the same spherify effect as the other one. In fact, all of these do. And then inside that one, I have one that's a little bit larger than that one. It's 139, and that also has a segment of two, two, and two, and it has the spherify effect as well. And then I have one more cube, and that one's 139, 139, and also segments of two, two, and two. So I have all of these things inside there. And then what I did was I duplicated that same setup and I moved it over here. And then on the spherifies, I set the strength to zero. If you watched previous tutorial, you'll know what I'm doing here. I'm just making a blend shape between the sphere and the cube. So if we go inside the cloner here, let me show you what that setup looks like. I have the mode set to linear. I have clones set to blend. I have fixed clone turned off because I want it to actually move from here to there. And that's the only relevant settings here. So if I turn this back on, everything's gonna be sitting right here. So I'm gonna turn on my cloners again. So I'm just gonna to go to all here. Ooh, I don't need grid. So inside the cloner, in the effectors tab, I have one effector and it's a plane effector. And what this plane effector does is it's just gonna do our blend. So I have it set to have a linear fall off. And inside the parameters tab, I have fields set to color, which this matters nothing. The only thing that matters in here is I have modify clone set to 100. So if we animate this currently, what it's gonna do is just gonna animate from the circle to the box. Now I should explain why this is rotating. So I went into this cube here and I changed its rotation values so that it's blending between the perfect square that's not moving, that's spherified, and this cube that's rotated. So if I scrub through this, you can see that it's just rotating like that. So the next part of this setup. So next I'm using an explosion and this can be found here in deformers as well. And it's right here, it's a little bomb. So if I turn that guy back on and what I have this thing set to, the only thing I'm using this for is to just break apart this object. So I have this set to strength of 0 0.001. That's it, there is no other settings for it. Next, we have a poly effects. And the poly effects here, I have it set to mode of full polys and segments. And then in the effectors, I have a plane effector and a random effector. And I'll show you what those do now. So if I turn this back on and I scrub through here, you can see we're transforming this through these fields. So let me show you. So our plane one, which is this guy here, this one has a position settings of negative 32, negative 32 and 23. Then I have some scaling going on here, all uniform at negative 165. And then I have some rotation values as well. And those are negative 72, 66 and 226. And then in the fall off tab, I'm using a box field. And that box field is right here. If we look at the box field, we have our fall off set to curve and we just have like a nice smooth 
curve, it eases in and eases out. And that's all we have set for that guy. And that one lives right here. So when it plays back, it's going to animate through here and end up over there. So next I have a random. And this random has a random field in it and a box field. The box field obviously is right here. And then the random field is set to overlay. And I have it set to noise and an FBM as our noise type and scale set to 220. That's what that looks like there. If we scrub through again, see it's breaking up. Now let me show you the settings in the random. So if I go to the parameters tab here, I have position set to 41, negative eight and 58. And then I have scale set to 5.3 and the Y is set to 4.37. All I'm doing is trying to break up the uniformity of the grid when it's rolling through the middle here. I should mention as well that inside the poly effects, I added that plane one and the random into my effectors tab. And in my fall off tab, I have a box field. And that's that guy is right here. And I'm just reusing the box field from the plane effector. And what that's doing is it's limiting our effect to only happen inside this box. So now if I play this back, you can see it's just tearing up. And you're seeing all the little bits inside from the other objects. Let me talk about shading this because we're gonna eventually use these as glitch mats. I have a pretty simple shader setup. I basically have a white, a medium gray, a really dark gray, and a black. And these are created by just a luminous channel. And I'm just adjusting the uh, brightness here. If you see, I have 70, 50, and zero. And obviously this one's 100. So that's it for this basic setup. So next, put a camera in here and I'm animating it straight through here. And we're gonna mess with how this renders out. So I'm gonna turn off everything here and I just wanna see my generators. So this is just the objects here. And the cool thing about this too is that this setup is completely parametric. So you could mess with it as much as you wanted to. But so how are we going to mess with the rendering? As you can see, it's already glitching. But the reason it's doing that is because I have this camera set to a focal length of 500. And then if I go over to my details tab here, you can see I have a near clipping of zero. And you can adjust this. And you can see you get a different set of glitches. So this is how we'll mess with the glitch effect. I'm gonna leave it at zero for now. And I'm gonna play this back so you can see it. So the important thing is how do you get this out of here and into like a render? Because if I just pop off a regular render, it's perfectly clean. Well, the trick is gonna be to turn the render to hardware GL. You can use software GL as well, but hardware GL is just faster. And then in here, I'm not turning on any of the enhanced features at all. The only thing I do want to turn on is an alpha channel. And that's mostly because I want this black. So that's it. Those are the basic settings. Now I should note that on every computer, depending on your graphics card and how your hardware is set up, it's gonna be slightly different. So that's the cool thing about it. It's not gonna be the same on every machine. So you can get a bunch of different glitches from different machines. So I'm gonna just hit render real quick. And you can see here it is. It renders pretty much real time because we're using OpenGL as our renderer. So that's it. So let me play that back for you. Now let me show you how to adjust this and maybe change up the glitches or make them bigger or whatever. So in our case, we're pretty far away, but let me open up a different one here. Now this one is set up exactly the same way, except for if I hit play here, you can see I'm much closer to the, to the thing. And how I changed this one up, I came in here and I went into the box here or to the cube side, I should say. And I rotated this just a little bit differently than the other one. And then in order to get closer to this, because if I zoomed in, the clipping plane would move and it would stop working. So I went into the camera here and I changed it to 1800 as my focal length, which brought me closer. But my clipping plane stayed the same. And actually just to change what the look of this is, I adjusted my clipping plane. So if I play that back now, you can see we've got a bigger star and now we've got glitches over here. And again, I'm adjusting all of this stuff by just rotating different things inside here. So like, for example, this box here, um, let me turn everything back on. 
And you can see this box here. You can rotate it and you see the glitches are changing. And that's what the cool thing about this is, is you can just adjust what your glitches are going to look like pretty much real time and then just play it back now and watch what it's doing. All right, that's it for this week. Definitely go and play with this technique and see what you can come up with. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we'll catch you later.